think people have shown that they didn't call it a lecture. Yeah, we call it like a talk. talk. Astronomy and physics booty show. I like booty. That would get people to do Dude, you start sh strutting around a little skirt, I'm out. You're gonna have to find a new cameraman. <laughs> slash roadie slash thing one. Fans. <laughs> so I came out here today to talk about basic astronomy and basic physics with everybody because we're not bastards and Janet invited me to come out here. My opening In 1992, the Catholic Church had a meeting. And I imagine a clandestine affair in a room filled with dark cattle, stealing crabs. Play behind a bunch of serious men gathered on a huge old table, discussing and debating with much rigor. Finally, they reach a decision. All proud of themselves, they release a statement to the press. We have absolved Galileo of all wrongdoing. In 1992, Galileo's problem, of course, he had learned too much. He learned that, indeed, the sun is at the center of what was him, his unit. The earth rotated around that, which was completely against what the church was teaching at the time. But it's all kinds of problems. The earth is in a small corner in a backwater galaxy. There is absolutely nothing special about our planet, except that only well, the color. First, it's the only place that we can prove the life of this. We have no proof anywhere else, no matter what conjecture or speculation you we cannot prove the life of this So this is the only planet that we're after we study. <coughs> and we have this. We think it's pretty darn special because we live on it. If we lived on Life 15 b we would think that was pretty darn special. We are. We live on it. I can take these telescopes outside at night in a fairly light fluid area. And I can see some pretty incredible things. I can set up the meeting, the big guy here. I can put him out in the yard. I can sit in my backyard, and I can count the moons of Saturn, and I can see the Cassini divisions and the rings of Saturn. I can see the shadow of the moon so on the surface it's of the planet. It's a cave optics. That's my dream telescope. I think that's exactly the name. I've heard something. Yes, look it up. Yeah, I've heard something. The first night. I took the big telescope out and set it up. <laughs> set it out my yard and I found a little speck of light just a little bit above the horizon, way out there. I looked through the telescope at it and you know, adjusted my focus button and stuff like that. And literally I thought I was being happy. <laughs> I stepped back from my telescope and I looked in front of it to see if somebody had slipped a slide or something in front of the telescope to pull a trick on me. I was seeing Saturn. It's amazing. I can look up and I can look up there and Saturn just boom, it's right there. Moves the whole bit. That's and he did do that. <coughs> I know. I have a que question for the end. Question for the end. Okay. And I was shocked that other people don't do this. Why don't people get a telescope and just look through? Yeah. The problem is, is a lot of people think a telescope is really complicated and hard to use. And they're not. Telescopes are one of the easiest and most basic scientific instruments out there. There's, there's nothing scary or complicated about using a telescope. When you go telescope shopping, search the web and do your homework. Most of my scopes, and I'll admit it freely, are Craigslist stores. You can find them on Craigslist because people buy them, they don't know how to use them, they put them in the closet, they rediscover them a short while later, months, years, put them on Craigslist and sell them for dirt cheap because they don't know how to use them. If you do a little bit of research before you go out shopping for a telescope, you can end up buying an amazing scope for very little next to all home. The selection on the here. The four 
Craigslist refactor. I purchased them off of Craigslist. I paid $200 for this telescope. Knew it at seven, eight hundred dollars It's a pretty serious stuff. The little me, on the other hand over here, the same thing that I'm talking about. Somebody bought it for their kid, their kid didn't like it, and put it back in the box and started to it. I found it at a garage sale. $100 telescope, I paid $25 for it. Very simple stuff to do. The Mini is an 8 inch Smith Cast Green style telescope. Meaning that there is a mirror and a lens. It combines two different kinds of telescopes. It's a reflector. It has a mirror here and a secondary mirror in here. Image comes through, it's reflected up to the secondary mirror after I need to look into it. That's where you get your image from. The reflecting telescope operates on lenses down here. And this comes through, goes straight through the telescope and look in the back. Focus in, that's where you have your image from. That's also a refractor, reflector, spin cast screen. Spin cast screen combines the higher quality of the refracting telescope with the ease of use of the reflector. You end up with a very expensive telescope. And if you can score one of these on list, good luck. Go for it. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Which is odd. You can find it on Amazon. This is a Galileo brand telescope, which is very strange because Galileo did not use it. But Galileo used a refractor telescope, which was only 20 millimeters smaller than this. This was 60. Galileo's was a uh, 40. So his telescope was a little bit smaller than this. His lenses were much poorer quality than what we've got nowadays. But he was still able to see the rings of Saturn, not in detail, but he knew they were there. He was able to see the moons of Jupiter, which is why we call them the uh, Galileo. <laughs> so let's try to set up we drive over and it'll track an object for you. The meter will track an object for you. The little telescope will find an object for you, but won't track it. And this guy works in absolute mouth, and it's all in. You know, you're going to be able to track it. Once I find my object with this telescope, all I have to do is tell it to keep following that object. And you can go make coffee. So I go make coffee, I come back on my Come back, we're still on it. I get my eyepiece. It's still dead center right in the middle of my eyepiece. Very cool feature. This one does it too. I'm jealous of him in that scope. Although I don't have my dry motor hooked up on that one because I actually prefer to run that one manually. It's a lot more fun to do that way. It does a lot. What was it that it. got me so interested in all this stuff? Carl Sagan. Right? I mean, Carl Sagan is the way that he taught and the way that he explained things to everybody was as I was watching the Cosmos TV show, Carl Sagan was talking to me personally. He was my great friend explaining all this stuff to me. And that was just, just amazing stuff. One of the telescopes that we have in space right now is called the Kepler Space Telescope. The Kepler Space Telescope is in space specifically to search for extrasolar planets, planets in other solar systems. To date, the Kepler has found more than 2,400 planets circling other stars. That's a pretty impressive number for as long as it's been up, which is five years, five, years. five six years, long as in space. What I find more impressive about that number is the Kepler's field of view. Now these telescopes here, they have a pretty big field of view. When you look up at the sky, you're seeing quite a lot of the sky. The Kepler Space Telescope, it's about 2,400. It only ever looks at the same spot in the sky. And it doesn't change. It stares at that one spot in the sky and it never moves. This field of view, it's taking two thumbs, pulling the arms away, where your two thumbs are, that's what the Kepler's looking at. That's it. That's it. That little square. That's all the Kepler's looking at. It's about 2,400 times. I think that's pretty amazing. The size of a postage stamp. There are many things about this universe 
person that I find to be completely amazing or mildly baffling. My favorite example of this is from my uh, another one of my writer friends, Timothy Ferris. He wrote a book called The Whole Shebang in Total Amazing and Melty Way. And he calls it Quantum Weirdness. <laughs> I've always been interested in things concerning the very large and the very small. Things concerning the very large is physics. Physics explains planets, planetary motion, galaxies, gravity. It does it quite well. When you get into the realm of the very small, physics breaks down and stops working. Plain and simple. Or it's The different rules that we use is quantum mechanics. We use quantum mechanics to explain the world of the very small. Now if we take a plane of glass, right? And in this plane of glass, we use a blue laser. And we embed, say, an image of a rope. And a four by four plane of regular glass. We get a holographic image. We're all very familiar with holographic images these days. Diamond dozen, there's nothing fancy about it. We haven't embedded this plane of glass, and then I walk it over to give it to my good friend Jada, and I trip. My plane of glass lands on the floor and shatters. What has happened to the image? Well, it's destroyed. We had this beautiful rose and this pane of glass, and it's fallen on the ground, and it's shattered, and it's ruined. Quantum mechanics says, no, it's not destroyed. If you go over to this pile of broken glass, and you pick up a shard in it, and you hold that shard, which was a piece of the entire image, the entire image is in that shard of glass. Your whole rose will be there, not a piece of glass. Why does that happen? Science doesn't know yet. It's quantum mechanics. It can't explain it, but it does happen and it is a fact. <laughs> we are taught and told from a very early age that nothing can exceed the speed of light. Because Einstein said so, that's why. Go to your home. <laughs> <laughs> so we can quantum mechanics has a loophole that works around it, and it's called the uncertainty principle. In quantum mechanics, there's this thing called paired particles. You can have one particle here, another particle here. The distance between the two particles can be whatever you want it to be. Let's say four light years. Right? Four light years from the A to B. These particles are paired with each other. Because of the uncertainty principle, when we look at a particle, when we observe it, we can only know one thing about it. We can tell the direction it's spinning, or we can tell the direction it's going. We can't know both. Because the act of observing it changes one or the other. But paraparticles, it's a little bit different. When I observe this particle, this particle is compared to that one, the quantum mechanics, four light years away, does exactly the opposite of that one does, and it does it instantaneously. So if this one, I observe it, and it changes its spin, this one, four light years away, instantly changes its direction. There's no time left between the two exceeding the speed of light. Why? Science doesn't know. Somehow, particle A and particle B are paired together so by the act of observing, by being the observer and creating the quantum field. That's where it changes it. Very interesting. This is, of course, very illogical. It makes scientists go down way down the line. <laughs> we use steel to make all kinds of things. There's steel in these telescopes. These are actually cast iron. So remember what I was asking earlier today? It's a cast iron. It's kind of like your cast iron. <laughs> if you take a piece of steel, 
I got a prop here in my coat. I forgot all about it. <laughs> in the form of an Allen wrench. That's all we can find because I forgot that I was going to be real. The main ingredient in this steel is iron. Everybody knows that. Everybody is very familiar with iron. Where does iron come from? Iron ore. Iron ore. Where does iron ore come from? They're all very good and reasonable answers to a Kind of a trick question. In the life of a star, stars go through many stages. As the star slowly burns up its hydrogen and, and helium fuel, it collapses in a powder cloud. Right? Each different contraction causes a different formation of a star. You end up with a brown door, you end up with a, uh, a red door, you end up, you know, all the way down to the smallest possible gravitational contraction, which is a neutron star. A neutron star cannot collapse any water that does not have a mass to cause it to collapse in upon itself. At that point, its own mass and its own gravity are spreading against itself and it will reach a state of force. If it has more mass than that, it will explode. And that will become a supernova explosion. A supernova explosion is a very violent event. And it blows this neutron star apart. It flings its components all over the place. The neutron stars are made of iron. As the farthest that they can collapse, once they reach the state of the element iron, they can no longer collapse any farther than that. That's where we get our iron. All of the iron and steel and metal you see around you comes from exploding stars. That's what it's originally from. So, I think, I find it amazing that we can hold in our hands a bit of an exploded star and not it's an element. where it comes from. I think that's absolutely fascinating. A piece of an exploded star comes billions of years old. The first person who can answer the following question correctly, yeah, not just answer. <laughs> Try to do this out. I was say, I can throw an answer out there, purple. The non trick question is pretty straightforward. The first person, and you have to raise your hand and I have to call on you. Don't hold for a shout. No, that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah, you can shout. Don't worry about raising your hand. The question is what star is closest to the Earth? I said you can shout. The sun, that is true. The sun is in fact closest to the earth. Now, <laughs> there have been people. You'd be amazed on how many people have that wrong. Or just sit there with a stuffed look on their face. <laughs> now, if anybody had any questions or anything like that about the telescope, or here's the telescope, where to get a telescope, the best style of telescope, she got her hand on.